Good morning, boys and girls. Um, you remember me, I'm Miss Marley. Miss Cindy can't be here today, so I'm gonna be here singing some songs with you. And I hope you're ready to learn about Jesus and praise God today. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a song that I think a lot of you already know. We're gonna sing Whisper a Prayer. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. And I think a lot of you know the second verse, and it goes, God answers prayer in the morning. Ready? God answers prayer in the morning, God answers prayer at noon, God answers prayer in the evening, so keep your heart in tune. All right, and then we have another song here. And it's called When We Pray, and it goes to the tune of Oh Be Careful Little Hands. So I have our fancy little words here, and we're going to sing it together. Ready? Sometimes God answers yes when we pray. Sometimes God answers wait when we pray. Sometimes God answers no just because He loves us so. But we know God always answers when we pray. All right, we'll sing it one more time. Sometimes God answers yes when we pray. Sometimes God answers wait when we pray. Sometimes God answers no just because He loves us so. But we know God always answers when we pray. All right, and now Miss Carolyn's going to come up and give us a Bible lesson. Oops, noise over. <sighs> Thank you, Miss Marley. Boys and girls, prayer. Do you pray by yourself? I know you pray before meals and things like that, but do you ever pray all by yourself when you're alone? Maybe during the day, or maybe you spend time in prayer during a quiet time, God and I time? I hope you do, especially you who are older and old enough to you, older ones. I wonder what some of the things are that you pray for. Do you pray for yourself? What do you pray about for yourself? Do you pray for others? When you pray for others, what do you pray for others? How do you pray for others? Boys and girls, does God always answer your prayers? What are God's answers? You just learned from Miss Marley's song, didn't you? God answers yes. He might answer no. But he also might answer, wait. Those are three answers God always answers when we pray. Well, we're going to learn today about how Peter was prayed for by the church, the church, the body of believers um, in, those, in those days. You know, when Peter was born, his parents named him Simon. What did they name him? Simon, that's right. Simon's brother, Andrew, brought him, they were grown up, brought him to see Jesus. And Simon got saved. And when he did, shortly after he did, Jesus changed Simon's name from Simon, which means uh, hot-tempered, easily angered. Jesus changed it to Peter. Peter means stone, solid, unmovable, can't be moved. So Peter and his brother Andrew, soon after that, were called by Jesus to leave their fishing boats, their full-time jobs, and to follow him as his apostles. And after that, it seemed like Peter was always at Jesus' side. When we read through the Bible, things that Jesus is doing and saying, it's like Peter was always there. Peter was a devoted disciple, and he was a bold preacher. After Jesus went to heaven, Peter was the first apostle to preach to the Jews. And they, later on, Peter was the first apostle to preach to the non-Jews about Jesus and how to get saved. Non-Jews we also call Gentiles. 
Peter suffered for sharing the gospel. And he was jailed. Maybe you remember, he was jailed with John. And then later he was released by the Jewish council. They told him he was released, and they told him, now don't you go preaching this gospel stuff about Jesus anymore. And Peter said, sorry, I can't help but preach. What a good testimony that was. Well, right now there is an evil king on the throne in Palestine. His name is Herod Agrippa. What's his name? Herod Agrippa. Herod means king. So sometimes I might call him Herod Agrippa, but sometimes I might call him King Agrippa. And you'll know it's the same person, won't you? Herod Agrippa loved himself. He was a very proud man. And he wanted the Jews to like him and admire him so he would get more power and more strength. So he decided to pick on certain Christians there in Jerusalem, where his palace was located. And he started with a man named James, apostle named James. He had him arrested and then killed with a sword. It was a very sad time. And then, and oh, and the Jews liked that so much, Herod Agrippa decided to do, pick somebody else to do it too, and he picked Peter. And that's who we're learning about today. He picked Peter to pick on next. He had Peter arrested and put into jail and chained big heavy chains around his wrists and he was chained to a guard on one side and another guard on the other side and there were two more guards who were guarding the doors of the cell in the prison cells in the prison um, he was put in prison because Herod wasn't quite ready to kill him yet it was a special holiday for the Jews it was called Passover that happens in the spring around Easter time but it's a seven or eight day holiday. And Herod Agrippa had decided he would keep Peter in jail till that holiday was over, and then he would have him killed. Well, Peter is chained to two guards, and there are two more guards guarding the doors. This is the way it worked. Four guards guarded him, but there were four teams, four squads of four men. Four groups of four, how many is that? Or you could say four plus four plus four plus four. How many soldiers were guarding Peter altogether? Some of the older ones got that, didn't you? Sixteen. Sixteen soldiers to guard one Peter? Whoa. Of course, they weren't there all the time. They didn't need to be. He was chained, remember? What they did was four would, would be on duty for like about three hours, and then those would go off duty and rest or sleep or eat or exercise and then they would come back after three hours and and the others would leave well while Peter was in prison the church body of believers prayed for him fervently they prayed really hard the Bible says they prayed without stopping well now it's the night before Herod is going to have Peter killed and he's asleep on the hard, cold floor, chained to two soldiers who can't go to sleep. They had to stay awake. Of course, they only had to stay awake for three hours. Because if they fell asleep during duty, they would be killed. And they knew that. So he's sleeping on the floor between the two soldiers with his chains on. And there are two more guarding the doors. And all of a sudden, into Peter's cell came the angel of the Lord in a bright light didn't wake Peter up he was sound asleep he was not sitting up worried about what Herod Agrippa would do to him in the morning he was resting in God's will and trusting God in fact Peter was so asleep that the Bible tells us the angel had to hit him on the side to wake him up he said wake up arise quickly the angel said and Peter stood up, and the chains fell right off his wrists. And the angel said to him, put on your clothes, and he did. Put on your shoes, and he did. Now follow me, the angel said. Now the guards are still awake, but somehow God is keeping them from seeing or realizing they're totally unaware of what was happening, of the angel being there, or of what was happening in, their, in that cell. So Peter followed the angel out right past those two guards there, followed the angel out. He was thinking at this time that he was 
in a vision or something. He didn't really think it was real yet. Peter and the angel walked past, out of these two, they walked past the first guard at the first doorway. That guard didn't seem to notice them walking right past him. And they walked past the second guard at the second doorway. He didn't seem to notice he, they were walking right past him either. And then they got to the big iron door that goes to the outside. And you know what it did? It just opened automatically. In fact, in our Bibles, in the language that, it, that this was written in, in this part of the Bible was written in, in that day, Koine Greek, the word is automatos. The doors, that was the first recording of an automatic door. It just opened all the way up by itself. God did it. Well, Peter and the angel headed down the street a ways, and then all of a sudden the angel wasn't there anymore. That's when Peter realized this was not a vision. This was real, and that God had, had um, delivered him from evil. King Herod's plan to kill him. Where to go? Well, he headed for the house of the mother of John Mark, who was another believer. John Mark's mother apparently had a pretty good-sized house because inside that house, a lot of people were praying for Peter right then. They were praying that God would save him from being killed by King Agrippa. Peter got to the house, and when he was outside at the gate, he knocked on the gate, and a young girl came and opened the door. Her name was Rhoda. What was her name? Rhoda. Rhoda opened the door. Now it's dark out. And Peter must have said something to her because she recognized his voice, the Bible tells us. She had probably heard him preach before. She recognized his voice and she was so shocked. She forgot to go open the gate. She went back, running back in, closing the door behind her without thinking, and went into all the people and said, Peter's here! Peter's here! He's at the gate! Peter's here! He's alive! He's here! They said, you're crazy. Peter's the one we're praying for. He's in prison. He's chained. He can't be here. They thought she was crazy. And uh, sometime, uh, some of them thought maybe they were seeing Pete. She, Rhoda had seen Peter's... I didn't put Peter up. I'm sorry. Peter's uh, dead spirit that he had died already. Maybe that's what she saw. No, no, no. It was Peter. Meanwhile, Peter got closer to the house. And he actually knocked on the door. Nobody heard him because they were all busy in there saying, No, you're good. Yes, sir. Hey. So he knocked, knocked on the door. They didn't hear him. He knocked larger, harder, and harder. Then they heard it. And a bunch of people came to the door and opened it up. It was Peter. Peter, how could it be you? Are you supposed to be in jail? How could you be here? What's going on? Peter said, Calm down, calm down. And then he told them how God had sent an angel to free him from prison and how the angel had released him. And then he told them to go and tell everybody else, especially those who are praying for me right now, go and tell them, the other people in the church, the rest of the church body. And then Peter left then and went to a safe place to stay for a while. Well, back in the prison, the guards realized Peter's not there anymore. And they're more than just a little bit scared. You know what it means if their prisoner gets away. They are killed. They couldn't find him anywhere. And they were so concerned and panicking, they knew they were in trouble. And then, in the morning, King Agrippa came by looking for Peter to get him to have him put to death. But he wasn't there. He was very angry. He, made a he had a search made. He questioned the guards. And then he ordered those guards to be put to death for this. But God soon severely punished King Herod himself. King Herod Agrippa. King Agrippa was a very proud king, very proud person. And one day, soon after this, he dressed himself in a, in a, in a bright, bright, fancy robe. Now, the Bible doesn't say this part, but I've read it in a history book that his, the robe he wore that day was shiny, shiny silver, like a mirror, and the sun shining on it would be amazing to the people. And he's, he's giving a sermon, a speech, I mean, to, to all his people. And then he, Herod Agrippa heard them saying something down there in the crowds. He's a god. 
they decided he was like a god in his silver and his strong voice. <gasps> yes, I think he's a god. He's a god. He's a god. King Agrippa kind of liked that. He knew he wasn't a god, but he liked them thinking that. He liked the thought of being powerful, and he was very proud. So proud and evil was he. But God detests pride, doesn't he? Yes, he does. King Agrippa was seeking honor and glory for himself when God alone deserves all honor and glory. Boys and girls, remember that. Never take any credit for anything God does for you, through you, or with you. Be sure to give credit to God, all the glory to God. Well, let's see what happens to King Agrippa. In Acts chapter 12, verse 23, it says this, Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory. This part gets ugly. And he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. Painful death. His insides were eaten up with worms, by worms. Ugh. But look at this next verse. Acts 12, 24 it says, But the word, that's the spreading of God's word, the, but the word of God increased and multiplied. The word of God grew and spread in spite of what King Herod Agrippa wanted to happen. Well, boys and girls, if you've trusted in Jesus as your Savior, those of you who have, isn't it wonderful to know how God protects you like he protected Peter? How God loves and cares for you as much as he loved and cared for Peter. Isn't it wonderful to be able to trust him? To be able to pray to him and know that he will answer your prayers? It is so nice to be a child of God, isn't it? I want to remind, ask you, though, if you are born again, if you have trusted in Jesus as your Savior, think about maybe sometime later this summer when we have junior church in our church building, maybe sharing with us, with the other boys and girls in our class, how you got saved, what brought you to Jesus, how you trusted him as your Savior. But boys and girls, if you have never trusted in Jesus as your Savior, don't you miss being able to pray to God? Don't you miss knowing that you can trust Him to protect you and care for you all the time? It doesn't have to be that way. Jesus died for you so that you don't have to be separated from God anymore. But it's your choice to make. Is today the day that you want to make that choice? I hope so. Talk to mommy and daddy today about that, and they will help show you from the Bible how to make that choice. Miss Marley. All right, we have another song we're going to sing, and it's one we've sung before, so I have our little words here that we can do. And what we're going to do is when we get to this word here that I'm going to push up, we're going to shout that word, okay? I'll do what God wants me to do. I'll go where God wants me to go. I'll be what God wants me to be. I want to please the Lord. Just two choices on the shelf. Pleasing God or pleasing self. Just two choices on the shelf. I want to please the Lord. All right, on this next one, we're going to whisper the word, all right? I'll see what God wants me to see. I'll see what God wants me to sing. I'll learn what God wants me to learn. I want to please the Lord. Just two choices on the shelf. Pleasing God or pleasing self, just two choices on the shelf, I want to please the Lord. All right, for the last one, we're going to shout again, and I want you to really pay attention to the words, and I want you to really shout it out, okay? Ooh. I'll say what God wants me to say, I'll hear what God wants me to hear. I'll think what God wants me to think. I want to please the Lord. Just two 
choices on the shelf Pleasing God or pleasing self Just two choices on the shelf I want to please the Lord I want to please the Lord All right, Miss Carolyn's going to come up and have a missionary story for us. I have a true story to tell you today about a boy named Carlos. What's his name? Carlos. Carlos grew up in a country called Puerto Rico. Can you say that with me? Here it's written. Puerto Rico. Carlos grew up, was growing up in Puerto Rico. Carlos's eyes were big and dark and shining. You might even say they were bright and shiny as chocolate pies. And as Carlos bounced his ball for his little dog to catch, he laughed. His perfect teeth shone white against his dark skin. Jump bonito, Carlos called again and again. To most people, Carlos's little dog looked quite ordinary. But to Carlos, the dog was beautiful. And so he named him Bonito, which means beautiful. It was not every boy in Puerto Rico who was as fortunate as Carlos. Carlos lived in a lovely home on the outside of the city of San Juan in Puerto Rico. His mother and his father were very good to him. He always had plenty of food to eat and nice clothes to wear. And then too, there was a little brother to play with and that nice new car his father had bought. Carlos was a very happy boy as he played that day with his ball and his dog. He thought he needed nothing more. Even in school, Carlos was at the head of his class. He was usually the first to answer questions. The only thing which made Carlos unhappy was getting grades that were not perfect. You might say, yes, Carlos was indeed a very fortunate boy. Yet, Carlos needed the most important thing in his life. He needed it badly, even though he didn't realize it. Some of the boys and girls in Carlos's class at school invited him to what they called a Bible or a good news club. Rosa, who sat close to Carlos in school, invited him again and again, but Carlos always said that he wanted to play and would not go. Then one day, as Carlos played outside, he saw so many boys and girls running up the hill and down the hill, all in a hurry to get to the home where the good news club was held and he decided he would go and see what it was all about. He slipped inside the house and sat on the floor close to the door. He hoped he wouldn't be noticed, but he smiled at Rosa when he saw her looking his way. Then when he heard the boys sing this song, listen. Si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, la Biblia dice así. You know the tune, don't you? It's Jesus Loves Me in Spanish. Carlos tried to sing with them, and he began to forget himself as he heard the beautiful music. But what was this? The Bible tells me so. People were not supposed to read the Bible for themselves, were they? Carlos thought. Yet, as the singing came to an end, Carlos noticed the teacher holding a book in her hand, which clearly said, La Biblia. The Bible. And then the teacher was pointing to a picture hanging on the wall as she said, This is a picture of Jesus, God's Son, knocking at the door. Surely the person on the other side of the door will open it quickly when he knows it is Jesus. Let me tell you why he knocks and why he is not always permitted to enter. It's a true story, and God told us about it in his book, The Bible. Long ago, she said, before our world was made, the Lord Jesus was with God the Father in heaven. They saw that people living on the earth were sinful and could never get to heaven with sin in their hearts. They knew that people could never get rid of sin themselves, for all people are born in sin. And she continued, the Lord Jesus was willing to leave heaven where he lived with God the Father. 
He was willing to come down to earth and become a man so that he could suffer the punishment for our sins. And so it was that Jesus himself laid aside the glory which he had with the Father and came to earth. He was born as a baby, and his first bed was a manger in a stable. The teacher held up a picture showing Jesus as a baby in a manger. Carlos got up on his knees so that he could see better. He forgot that now he could very easily be seen in the room filled with boys and girls. The teacher noticed him as she went on. The cross in the picture, she said, is to remind us that after Jesus had grown to be a man, he did die on a cross. Even though he had done nothing wrong ever, even though he had never sinned, and even though he had been wonderfully kind to many people, they quickly took him outside the city of Jerusalem and crucified him. They left him to die, hanging on a cross. And she continued, Although Jesus suffered greatly, he did not complain. He even asked God to forgive those who had nailed him there. He wanted to die for our sins, to take our place. This is why he came down from heaven. He wanted to die for us, for our sins. Why, thought Carlos, why would he do that? Then the teacher pointed to the tomb, a big rock with an opening in it and a large stone standing beside the opening. After the they took the body of Jesus down from the cross, she said, they put it in a tomb, a cave inside a rock. A big stone was rolled in front of it and soldiers guarded it so no one could get the body out. But God could, and God did. He sent an angel to roll away the stone. Jesus lived again. He walked the dusty streets once more and many saw him before he went back to heaven again. Why, Carlos thought, Carlos thought again, why? The teacher continued, Perhaps you do not quite understand why Jesus did all of this for us, the teacher continued. Listen to this. Listen carefully, please. And then the teacher read from her Bible. She read this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not die, but have everlasting life. As the teacher explained how everyone needed salvation, good boys as well as bad boys, Carlos began to see that he did need something more. He really needed to be saved from his sins. The teacher pointed again to the picture of Jesus knocking at the door. Is he knocking at the door of your heart? She asked. Will you let him in? Or will you refuse to open the door? Carlos knew that Jesus was knocking at his heart. He wanted to let him in. After the other boys and girls had gone home, Carlos stayed and talked to the teacher. Carefully, she explained that he was one of those for whom Jesus had died. And that very day, Carlos opened the door of his heart and said, I know I'm a sinner. Please come in, Lord Jesus. I need you. I need you very much. Carlos's heart was singing as he raced home that day. And then as he got close to home, he slowed down. He had not thought about how his dad and mom would feel about all of this. He'd not even asked permission to go to the Good News Club that day. In his excitement, Carlos had forgotten. Now his parents would be very angry with him. And they were. Carlos waited patiently that night at supper time for his dad to finish eating his steak. Carlos ate his beans and his rice and his bananas, but his father ate all the meat. Carlos knew he was fortunate to get any supper at all after being such a disobedient boy. It was not until later that Carlos sat down and explained to his parents just what had taken place that day, and they listened patiently until he finished. And to Carlos's surprise, his father said, I don't think this will hurt you, son. You did wrong today by going without permission, but you've explained and said you were sorry. We are good parents, no? We listen, and we will let you go to this club every time. If we let him go, he will soon get tired and not want to go anymore. If we say, no, you cannot go, maybe he will sneak there anyway. 
He will always be wanting to go. You will see, Mamita, that Carlos's Papito knows what is best. But Carlos didn't get tired of going to Good News Club. His teacher and the other boys and girls prayed for Carlos's parents, prayed that they might listen to the gospel and get saved. Isn't it nice when true stories end happily? When the story is true one, this cannot always be so, but this true story, this true story has a very happy ending. One night, Carlos's father went to hear a preacher who told his listeners the very same Bible story that Carlos's teacher had told the children. And Carlos's father got saved. The very next Sunday, Carlos was permitted to go to Sunday school and junior church. Then the day came when Carlos was able to take his father, his mother, and little brother to the church where he'd been going to Sunday school and junior church. Now the whole family knows and believes that Jesus died for them. They are a very happy family. But do you know how Carlos and his family were able to hear about the Savior? It was because boys and girls like you gave their very own money to God. And the money was sent to missionaries in Puerto Rico. And these missionaries reached Carlos with the gospel. I wonder how many souls in foreign lands have been reached because of you. Miss Marley, do we have another song that we can sing? Yes, ma'am. All right. We have one more song, and I hope you all know it. It's Jesus Loves Me. Just like the one that the kids in our story, in the story Miss Carolyn just told, saying Jesus loves me, we're going to sing it too. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. loves me, the Bible tells me so. All right, Miss Carolyn's going to come back. Okay, boys and girls, I usually like to bring something with me, and I did today. I brought two pieces of ribbon, and these two pieces of ribbon, this gold one, we're going to make, have that stand for God because God's throne is in heaven, paved with streets of gold. God is pure and holy and righteous. This blue one's going to stand for us, for people like you and me. But I have a problem because I forgot to do something. Would you sing a song with them real quickly? While yeah. I get my pieces, I forgot a piece I'm going to go get. <laughs> Let's see. Let's sing, I think you all know as the deer. I think the last time I was with y'all, we sang that one. So let's sing that one, okay? As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. In you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Are you ready, Miss Carol, or should we sing another song? I am ready. All right. Let me just get on over there. I think I'm ready. Here I come. Are you ready for me, boys and girls? Am I ready for me? Ah, oh, just a second. I can't pick it up. Okay. I have all these pieces. What I had forgotten to bring with me was, remember we have this gold ribbon that stands for God and this blue ribbon that stands for us. But I had forgotten to cut myself and bring with me a black ribbon. This black ribbon stands for, reminds us of, stands for sin. 
the sins that we are we commit, the sins that we are born with, we are born, aren't we, with a want to to do sin. I'm going to tape this black ribbon to the gold one, and then I'm going to tape it to the blue one because I want to show you a picture of what it's like in our lives. Get that to stick real well. Look at how sin separates us from God. If this is us and that's God, ugly sin separates us from God. And that is very sad because God wants us to be with him and he wants to be with us every day, all the time, and after we die in heaven. Well, I have a little black bag, black and gold bag here. It reminds me of God's purity and our sin. Now, there's nothing in my bag. As you can see, it's, we, we push it apart. See, it's an empty bag. I'm going to put this strip of paper, this ribbon that has, remember, sin separating us from God. If you trust in Jesus as your Savior, what happens? Jesus washes away that sin that separates you from God. And what's, it, what's the result? No more sin separating you from God. Oh, I pour, pulled it too hard and it's starting to come apart. No more sin separating you from God. Would you like to be a boy or girl that's not separated from God anymore? Talk to your parents today. Maybe today will be the day that you'll trust in Jesus as your very own Savior. Well, so long for now, boys and girls.